also make a hill shade in uh, with last tools. So let's make a hill shade of the entire area of the terrain with a tool we haven't used before. And that tool is very scalable. It can produce, a, it can process a lot of points. I told you before, most of the time we need 20 million points. That's sort of the maximum. But there is one tool or two tools which are very scalable. And that's called the last extension of last tools. And that's basically based on the on the postdoc work I did in, in Berkeley. It's based on the streaming tin technology. That's I think unique to uh, to last tools. So it's called blast to them. So if you open that, it looks very similar to last to them. It's actually almost identical, except it can handle up to two billion points instead of twenty million. So that's quite a difference. Um, so what we can do now, we can load in all the ground points of the entire area and make one big seamless raster. And the question is now, if we load and merge all tiles into one, which input should we now use? Now we have all these inputs here. Exactly. And why? Because we don't want buffers anymore. We're using all the points now. Because we don't have seams. We make it a seamless tin. That means we're using all the points we have. There won't be, you know, the dough is the entire area. And there's only one cookie and that's the entire area. So there won't be any seams to worry about. If you would use the buffers, the buffer tiles, you, you would use double points mm -hmm. in the buffer areas, and some of those points are really not good. So, with, I used the, the final tiles as input, and I only use, for making a DTM, I only use uh, the round points. I keep classification Two. Yeah, so I used the, the last tiles final without buffers but with all the classifications. I don't need to worry about noise points because I'm only using the ground points. I'm making a DTM. We're merging them all into one. So this you can't do with last to them. Last to them will crash if you do that because it runs out of memory. But last to them can handle all the points from all these files in one process. And then we output and we output well what do we actually output? I want to now create a hill, hill shading directly. We already have our DTM that we can compute on. We created it a tile based. Uh, now I want one I can look at. For also, it's kind of a quality check. I always recommend you, after computing a DTM, make a hill shade of the DTM and look it over. Make sure you don't have any cut off mountain tops or you don't have any buildings still inside your data. Because if you then normalize, you don't notice that afterwards anymore because then the DTM is gone. But what you will have, you will have the wrong heights in all the areas where you made a mistake. If you cut off mountain tops, then the trees of the mountains will be too large because the terrain is lower than it really is. If you leave in buildings and the buildings have uh, trees over them, then you will make those trees too short because the terrain you use for normalization is higher than the real terrain. So, and a hillside shading is a very easy way for the human eye to make a quick check for mistakes. You know my favorite output format for hillside shadings is a PNG format because it displays nicely in Google Earth. And the file name 
well, I want to call it now DTM maybe underscore hillshade dot PNG. And now I want to put it in a directory that I know. If you, if you don't specify a directory, sometimes you don't know exactly where your data ends up. Sometimes it's in the bin folder, sometimes it's in the last folder you visited. Uh, it's always good to specify an output directory. So I will, I will put it in the main folder because it's the entire area. I'll put it right here in this folder. Use current. Now let me think, have I done everything? I merge everything into one so there's no point in running on multiple cores. It'll be one process that reads one tile after the other. Um, I'm outputting it into that directory with that name. Oh, the step size. Yeah, I want again to have half a meter step size. There's nothing here like use tile bonding box because we're using all the points now and the bounding box will be decided by however big all the points are. Of course, you could specify directly something you wanted to cut out, but we didn't talk about that yet. These are advanced options that you always can find out by reading the readme file. Thank you. Um, I think that is everything I need to do. I press run and I review the command line. Very important is now this merged. So they're all getting merged into one. I got this merged by clicking this file here, uh, this check button, merge files into one. The input is all the tiles final. I only keep classification two and I have a step size of half a meter. Now half a meter is much coarser than the data we have. We could go down to 25 centimeters if we wanted to, but then we create a really big image. And we want to display that in Google Earth and we, wanna, we don't want to kill, kill Google Earth, so. Okay, start. This is done. I now have somewhere this DTM. And because we had projection information, we created a KLMM, KLM file. KM, KML. Daniel, Daniel, apaga um pouquinho a luz aqui da frente. And here we go. Voila. There's our CHM. And now you can do a quickly a quick tour and see if it looks reasonable. Oh look, he has some uh, some Paraguayan tank positions. <laughs> I don't know what those are, but maybe some diggings for ponds or I don't know. And, and you see how it becomes less, uh, less detail under dense canopy. So if I now turn that off, I should, I should see that this is a natural forest here, and I got very little penetration. Whereas this, you know, fake plantation forest here, it's like, it's not there for the laser. I get lots of returns from the ground. Hear that? Under the, under the plantation forest here, and 
in the open area here, or the lake. That's the lake. Yeah. It looks very different, but then it becomes very fuzzy in the in the natural vegetation, which is very very dense and doesn't let light us through so much. So, what what we could now do, we could also compare the ground classification of last tools to the original ground classification. That'd be interesting. You know, we, we got the original ground classification from the vendor. We haven't used it in a long time because we read it everything. Let's see what that looked like. So let's start. Uh, unfortunately, I I stopped my, my, my tool, so I have to start it again. Same thing, blast to them. I browse to Brazil, and now I load the raw data, the very, very raw data, the one we started with. Raw. And I'm loading all those. And I do the same thing again. I filter the ground returns. Now this is a, this is very risky business here for me because I'm I'm comparing in front of a 50 people live audience my software directly against some other software and I haven't done it beforehand so maybe the other software is way better. Uh, um, the output I choose the same output folder but I give it a slightly different name. So I'll put it right next to this one in the main 2013 folder and I'll give it a name called um, DTM um, Auric, like original, hillshade.png. Same step size of course, going to be fair. We also merged into one, so we shouldn't have a boundary problem. We again do a hillside shading, and the output should be PNG. This time, of course, in order to look at them side by side in Google Earth, we need to add the projection again, because we don't have the projection yet. So, uh, do we still know our EPSG code? What was the code? Uh, Thirty-one nine. Eight. Okay. You'll have to fix it. I'll, I'll use I'll use some EPSG code and I'll I'll repair it in the last moment. This is an EPSG code from Ireland, but oh well. We'll just change it in the command line. Okay, quick review. We loaded the raw data. We merged all into one. We put it in the 2013 folder, gave it a different file name, step size is half a meter, hillside shading, PNG output, and I add the EPSG code as the projection. So we create a KML file that puts it at the right place. Now I shouldn't forget to fix the EPSG code. Let me do that first. Somewhere at EPSG. Yeah, I put the right number now. Three one nine. Three one nine eight three eight three. Yeah. Three one nine eight three. Everything else looks good. Hill shade elevation step two. Keep classification two. List of files. Those should be the raw files. Merged. Okay. Start. 